What does Chrome's elimination of third-party cookies mean to meta advertisers? Now I gotta tell you, I am not a cookie expert. As a meta advertiser, as someone who specializes in meta advertising, this is important. I, I need to know, is this something I need to be concerned about? Is this something that's going to be a really big problem? Are there things that I need to do to make sure that I'm protected? So first thing, what are cookies? Uh, that we, we've got to start there, right? So essentially, all cookies are is just some data, it's some text that um, are placed on your web browser, on your device, that are used for various purposes by whoever, whomever placed uh, that cookie, right? So it could be super useful, helpful, uh, kind of like, you know, keeping you logged in, at least the way I understand it, right? A, a cookie is added to, to keep you logged in. So when you come back, you don't have to log in every time. Um, but also maybe if there's a personalized experience on a website, um, so you see those things that matter to you, cookies are added. There are also some maybe sinister reasons uh, cookies could be added. Uh, for tracking, I say tracking purposes and following you around, but uh, it would be like a digital fingerprinting, um, getting basically getting access to specific data about individuals, right? And trying to see what a specific person has done on the web, as opposed to kind of anonymized data that can be used for behavioral purposes for ads and things like that, right? So there's that also that gray area in between that maybe freaks out some people, but not as sinister as like fraud, essentially, right? So that's those, that, those are cookies the way I understand it. Again, I'm not a cookie expert. Now understand there are first party cookies and third party cookies. So first party cookies would be your website placing those cookies. And that would be, again be kind of typical reasons would be um, to keep you logged in, provide a personalized experience. We're not tracking you across various websites as opposed to a third party cookie where that third party does not own this website. And, and the purpose is to track them, uh, track people across various websites and devices. Understand, this Google tracking protection is specific only to third-party cookies. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any um, intent to take down first-party cookies. All right, so let's walk you through Google's tracking protection. So again, this started rolling out as of January 4th. It rolled out globally, randomly, to 1% of Chrome users uh, via desktop and Android. And so this is part of Google's privacy sandbox for the web. The long-term goal here is to completely eliminate third-party co cookies from Chrome browsers by the end of 2024. If that happens, that's 60% of all browsers, more than likely we're just, everybody's gonna eliminate third-party cookies, right? So if you're a part of this test, you're gonna get a, a notification looks like one of these here to let you know. Now, there may be cases where third-party cookies are required for a website to function. If Chrome detects that, it may, may give you a notification that you can turn them back on specifically for that website. So temporarily re-enable them because that's bound to be an issue for some websites. Now, in terms of the timeline of this test, again, it's an initial 1% of users. This is public from Google that uh, this is going to be running at least through the first half of 2024 just among this 1%. Now this might change, obviously, but as you can see here, they're not looking to roll it out for everybody, for all 60% of you know, all users using Chrome until the second half of 2024. How quickly that happens is probably gonna to be uh, determined based on how this test runs and what they learn. Now understand, what we're talking about here isn't completely new. Uh, I think. When we talk about that, I don't, I'm not talking about the ATT prompt when people opt out, right? That's sort of like this, but Safari has been doing this for years. Now, there've been various phases of this. I think it goes back to like 2017, where 
Safari's intelligent tracking prevention blocks third-party cookies and only allows first-party cookies. So that's already been happening on 14% of all browsers, which is Safari browsers. So when kind of taking this, this the importance of this uh, in context, just kind of keep that in mind. So how does this impact meta advertisers? That's the million dollar question. That's something I'm still trying to sort out, okay? Um, it's not entirely clear. And I don't know if that's intentional. Like all the stuff I've read, I haven't seen anything that's specific to meta advertisers, right? I, I, I kind of get the sense that some of this is related to uh, publishers who monetize their websites with ads. Some of this could be related specifically to Google ads. Um, but what's interesting is I haven't seen a lot related to, oh, this is going to impact attribution optimization. It's been more about targeting. Uh, and maybe that's because if, as an advertiser, you're already passing first-party data, like via the API, it's probably not that big of a deal. I mean, that's kind of the way I'm seeing it. It's not really clear how much the Metapixel relies on third-party cookies. So when, when that goes away. So what should you do? It's not clear, like, again, what the impact of eliminating third-party cookies is going to be on meta advertisers, but it would be logical to take these two steps I'm gonna, gonna give you here. First of all, enable first-party cookies with the Metapixel. So you can do this by going to your events manager, go to data sources, selecting your pixel, and go to the settings tab, and there you'll find a cookie usage section. And again, by default, first-party cookies should already be on. If they're not, you may want to turn them on. I'm not going to tell you to turn them on. That may be a privacy slash legal question, but you can turn them on. So it even says when first party cookies are turned on, this provides additional data that helps Facebook deliver relevant ads to people. I like how it says Facebook, by the way. Relevant uh, ads to people who may be interested in your products or services. Number two, again, first party data, connect the conversions API. Okay, so we've been talking about connecting the Conversions API ever since 2021 with Apple's ATT tracking opt-out, right? And anytime we can pass first-party data via a dedicated server, as opposed to via Facebook's or Meta's third-party browser pixel, the better. So connect the Conversions API via web. I've done it via the Conversions API gateway. I use Stape for that. Or... It, in addition to that, you may want to use the Conversions API for, the C for CRM. That's if you have any other conversions that happen offline, essentially. Pass those conversions as well. That said, there's still a lot of questions outstanding at this point. I hope that it will be clarified here in the coming days, weeks, months. Um, but it's really not clear to me, for example, what the direct impact of eliminating third-party cookies is on meta advertising, because meta really needs to be clear about because we're not even sure how those third-party cookies are being used right now and how the first-party cookies are being used and whether the first party already cancels out the third party, right? So that's the first thing. So we'll, we'll certainly find this out soon, I'm sure. Second, does it, implementing Conversions API solve for a lot of this data loss that's being blocked? Additionally, is Meta going to need to make changes to the Pixel or the API with these updates? Don't know. Will any of these updates impact Targeting, that's the, kind of the word. Optimization, attribution, more, I guess we'll see. Finally, if you wanna do your own research on this and dig a little bit further, I provided a list of all the links that I've been reading myself. All right, so this might help you too. Beyond that, I hope this at least gives you a current kind of first steps and understanding of what is happening here. Um, again, not a cookie expert, but the best I got. If you've got any more, any more information on this, I'd love to hear it from kind of reputable sources. Otherwise, uh, to read my blog post, go to johnlimmer.com slash cookies. Thanks so much, and good luck to you as we browse through this cookie-less future. All right, take care.